In lesson 17 today, we were learning how to convert decimals to fractions in order to easily multiply decimals. First off, let's see how we model decimal multiplication. Okay. So on the first one here, the A and B were done for us, so I'm going to start with C. Now this says 1 6 times 1 and 6 tenths. So this would be like saying 1 tenth times 1 plus 1 tenth times 6 tenths. And that's what we're going to model. But the 6 tenths, we're actually going to be, it's 1 tenth times 1 whole plus 1 tenth times, and we're going to write it in fractional form, 6 tenths. So our first one here, we're going to model, this is our 1 whole. And that is the whole thing. And then we got our one tenth, which we're going to model on this side. And that would include all these blocks that both fractions interact with. So as you can see here, one tenth times one is going to be equal to. 10 hundreds because that's 10 out of 100 10 times 10 there's 100 blocks in this whole unit now our second one this time we're going to go with six tenths and our one tenth so as you can see this time we're going to end up with six hundreds Now when we add these two together, we'll end up with 16 one hundredths. <clears throat> All right. Let's come down and try the next one. Next one has the same way. This would be six tenths times one whole plus six tenths times nine tenths. But we're going to rewrite the 9 tenths as a fraction. So it's going to be 6 tenths times 1 whole. That is a times. Plus 6 tenths times 9 tenths. Writing it as a fraction. So here's our whole. And that's going to encompass the whole top. Then we're going to go with our 6 tenths. And we would include every block here that was incorporated by both fractions. I say fraction because the whole number on top, we're actually talking about 10 tenths since we're working with 6 tenths. So every one of these blocks here interact or intersect with both fractions in the model. So as you can see, everything up there. And we know this is 10 by 6. So this is going to be 60 out of 100. Now the second one, once again, we are doing 9 tenths this time. And 6 tenths. So once again, we would include everything, oops, that encompass both fractions. I went a little too far in the one. Almost there. So this being 6 by 9, we know the total amount of blocks it's going to intersect would be 54 out of 100. Now we have 60 one hundreds 
plus 54 one hundredths, which is going to give us 114 one hundredths. Now, if we're going to write this, and if we wanted to convert this back to decimal, we'd know that the 4 would have to go in the hundredths place. So we'd end up 1.14 as a decimal. Up top here, if we wanted to convert this back to a decimal, the 6 would be in the hundredths place. So we have 0 0.16. All right, now let's take a look at how we're doing these decimals to fractions. First off, here we got 4 times 6 tenths, and we've converted 6 tenths to the fraction. Now we have 4 times 6 over 10, which gives us 24 tenths, and that means the 4 has to go in the tenths place. So the answer would be 2.4. This allows us to actually multiply fractions, not get lost or tied up in where the decimal is moving. Now on B, we have 4 tenths and 6 tenths. You can see here we have converted them. And we now when we combine them, we got 6 times 4 over 10 times 10, which is going to give us 24 over 100. And if we want to write this as a decimal, the 4 goes in the hundreds place. So we'd end up with 24 hundreds. On C, you can see what's already done for us. And we're still going to have the 4 and 6 here, which is going to give us 24 and 10 times 100 is 1,000. So now we got 24 thousandths. So the 4 would be in the thousandths position. So we end up with 24 thousandths. Now D is when we start doing it by ourselves. So we're going to go 7 times. In the 3 tenths, we're going to write as a fraction. And then we got 7 times 3 over 10, which equals 21 tenths. And the 1 will be in the tens place, so it would be 2.1, so 21 tenths. The next one, we're going to end up with 7 tenths times 3 tenths, which gives us 7 times 3 over 10 times 10, which equals 21 one hundredths. And the 1 will be in the hundredths place, so there's 21 hundredths. Our next one, we have 7 hundredths times 3 tenths, which gives us 7 times 3 over 100 times 10, which equals 21 one thousandths. And the 1 goes in the thousandths position. So we have 0 0.021. On G, now this is where we're going to be kind of unique. We're going to use our unit form. I could say 1.3. And you see how when we did it with the models, it was kind of difficult breaking them apart. But how if we call this 13 tenths times 5? I mean, that's just 5. So that would equal 13 times 5 over 10, which would equal 65 tenths. So 65 tenths, a 5 in the tenths place, excuse me, be 6.5. Next one, once again, I'm going to go to 13 tenths times 5 tenths, which gives me 13 times 5 over 100, which equals 65 one hundredths. So the 5 goes in the hundredths place, so 0 0.65. And the last one, this time it's not 13 tenths. I actually have 13 hundredths times 5 tenths which gives us 13 times 5 over 100 times 10, which gives us 65 thousandths. So the 5 goes in the thousandths place. So we end up with 65 thousandths. <clears throat> Jennifer makes 1.7 liters of lemonade. She, if she pours 3 tenths of lemonade in a glass, how many liters of lemonade are in a glass? Now, the only reason I'm going to do this is because I want to show you the tape diagram and how to solve this. Here we have our tape diagram. And it says she starts off with 1.7 liters and has three tenths. So we're going to put them in tenths. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And it says three tenths in a glass. 
and it says how many liters are lemon air in a glass. So I want to know, this is 3 tenths, I want to know what 3 tenths of 1.7 is. So 3 tenths of 1.7, that means 3 tenths times, and I'm going to take that 1.7 and turn it into 17 tenths, which equals 3 times 17 over 1, 10 times 10, which equals 30, be 51 hundredths. And 51 hundredths, that means the, five, the one would be in the hundredths place. So that's how they came up with a 51 hundredths. Four, Cassius walked six tenths of a three, six, three and six tenths mile trail. How many miles did he have left to hike? Let's go ahead and do a tape diagram. We know the total here is 3.6 miles. And it says he walked six tenths. <clears throat> so once again, I'm going to do tenths. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And it says he walked six tenths. So here's six tenths. And this is what he walked. Six tenths. It says, how many miles did he have left? Well, we can see this is what he has left. And this is four tenths. So I want to know what four tenths of 3.6 miles is. So that's going to equal four tenths times. And I'm going to change that to 36 tenths, which equals four times 36 over 10 times 10. Now, 4 times 30 is 120, 4 times 6 is 24, so it's going to be 144 one hundredths. Now, I know the 4 has to be in the hundredths place, so it's going to be 1.44 miles. So he has 1.44 miles left. Now, B says Cameron was 1.3 miles ahead of Cassius. How many miles did he hike already? How many miles did Cameron hike already? Okay. Well, I could, I could either find two ways. I could go 3.6 times 6 tenths to find out how far Cassius had walked. But I've already sol solved for how many miles he had left. So I could also go 3.6 miles and subtract the 1.44 that he has left. And I'd find out how much he walked. So that would be 5, so it's going to be 6, 1. So he has 2.16 miles. He actually walked 2.16 miles. And that was Cassius up here. Well, if Cassius walked 2.16 and Cameron was 1.3 ahead of him, we add these up we can see that he has already walked 3.46 miles.